Well, I think it was bound to happen. As there were more cases, higher profile cases, uh, the Department of Justice really didn't have enough personnel to handle all of those cases. And so what they needed to do is they spread it out amongst the U.S. Attorney's offices, got them involved, hired more experienced prosecutors who are aware of all the different tools that were available in order to prosecute these cases and investigate these cases. And so that's what you're seeing is sort of a, an influx of very traditional law enforcement techniques into this area. And I think it's largely because of the fact that they have very experienced prosecutors now working on these cases that have done trials, done real investigations in other areas. Well, I see two. I mean, obviously you're seeing a lot of cross-border cooperation. You're seeing a lot of uh, different countries getting into the action and, and the United States building their cases um, in uh, using that cooperation and using techniques that would work cross-border. But I think one of the more interesting trends is also a cross-regulatory trend where you're seeing cases that don't involve just the FCPA, but you're seeing export controls, money laundering, antitrust. And I think those are very fascinating, particularly the BAE case that just came down where you saw uh, ITAR charges, International Traffic and Arms Regulations, in what was essentially a bribery case. And for someone like me, who works in both areas, it's, it's a great thing to watch um, in terms of being able to explain to clients what's really going on, why they need to have compliance uh, across all of the different regulatory regimes, and how important it is that uh, the prosecutors are looking into every aspect of compliance, and so companies need to address all of those risks. I think companies are trying. I think it's very, very difficult, particularly when you've got inconsistent laws across jurisdictions where they operate, particularly with the UK. They think that they've got a compliance program that's rock solid if it addresses all of the FCPA issues, but obviously they would come into conflict with the UK Bribery Act. So I think it's really, really challenging and it takes a lot of thought because I know these companies don't want to just put something on paper that doesn't actually work and isn't relevant because their employees are going to ignore those laws and uh, those rules that they implement. So what they need to do is come up with very realistic, very simply communicated um, and uh, rules that are going to be able to be accommodated in all different jurisdictions. To me, it's making sure that there's a real tone at the top. Um, that to me, you know, you can have compliance officers at every level, but if they don't get the support from the top down, it's just not going to work for them. And I've seen that repeatedly, where you've got a lone voice crying in the wilderness and everybody ignores them because their CEO or their CFO, their board is not really paying attention and not giving them the authority that they need to really implement the changes that need to be made. And so I think leading by example, setting a tone in your own personal uh, behavior and conduct, um, I think that that's very important for the leadership to undertake. And then I think supporting the compliance efforts that the compliance officers and the compliance infrastructure are, are trying to implement.